So let's, so let's start. So welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Pavel Monchka and we have a Steve Keniston as a special guest today. Hello, Steve. Hey, Paul, how are you doing? I'm, I'm thank you, good. You know, feels like prison. This is what I said before, you know, four weeks <laughs> ago and it won't, won't change in next, I guess, uh, for eight weeks. But I think it's a great opportunity to do more webinars and share, share the knowledge with our audience and the special with, with the group like Spectrum Protect Professional. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, while it's, while it's not, uh, not the best of times, it is uh, a good opportunity to be able to focus and get in front of a system and uh, do some good learning and see what's available out there and uh, really take our time. So I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, and I appreciate that you, you, you found the time to share uh, knowledge with us. And today we decided to speak about the copy data management uh, topic and, and your goal will be to explain what the IBM actually uh, has um, in their portfolio. But I'm also looking forward to see some insight from the market and what is your personal approach uh, to this specific topic. Because as we know, the CDM is a little bit different uh, let's say flavor than the typical traditional backup and recovery platforms. Yes. Yes. I, uh, I totally agree with you. And I think it's a great compliment to, uh, any backup environment. And hopefully we can talk a little bit about what, what those capabilities are. Okay. So I think we'll let, let, let's get started. So Steve, the stage is yours, please. Oh, huh. thank you, Paul. Um, and for everyone on the phone listening, you know, um, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy this, uh, this presentation. So we'll talk about copy data management for, and we'll pick a couple of use cases, um, uh, true data management as well as cyber resiliency. And for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Steve Keniston. I'm a global business development executive for the IBM Spectrum storage software brand. Um, by all means, my contact information is here. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions regarding what you hear, and uh, I've worked with Paul a lot, so should you have any questions and want to get in touch with him or get in touch with me through him, that's, that's perfectly acceptable as well. So let's just talk a little bit about, as Paul said, you know, this notion around um, backup evolving, and, you know, Gartner is out predicting that 30% of organizations will be able to leverage their backup for more than just operational recovery. So for more than just recovering their business, but they might want to be able to do things like disaster recovery, test dev, DevOps, et cetera. And they want to be able to do that quickly in order to move the business along. Um, in addition, we're finding more and more business and application owners want to be able to have more control over their data and their data protection services. And they want to, and we're also hearing that, you know, organizations are looking to change um, or supplant their long-term backup and archiving strategies. Now, I think, I think that last one is they're not looking to change completely. They're looking to augment in order to create better business practices. So let's look in, into some of these things. So what we're finding is data is massively fragmented, right? Organizations believe that 82% uh, of, uh, of the business organizations believe that their data is just incredibly fragmenting. And we're see, we've seen this for, I would say, probably eight or 10 years now with the advent of copy data management solutions where clients have typically a copy of their production infrastructure and it's leading to multiple copies between six, nine, ten. I mean, there's just multiple copies of their environment. And, um, you know, that is creating massive data sprawl. And, you know, a lot of folks believe that data fragmentation and managing that fragmentation of that data and where it sits and are they at risk from that, that those uh, other copies of data is almost half of an administrator's job right? Trying to find it and pay attention to it, clean it up, et cetera. So it's time we kind of really get a hold of, of that information. And in addition- also in one of the reasons, Steve, when we, you know, when we spoke with our customers, partners about the data protection systems, you know, 10 years or 15 years ago, we have a scenario that we have all, in most cases, dedicated admins to the specific one job, yes? Right now, you know, more and more, are going into 
to the one bucket so into the one so definitely you know they have a less time for their you know jobs like you know backup and recoveries yeah paul your audio is cutting out a little bit Hello? but uh, i think what i'm hearing is that you understand that um the the systems administrator has more than one job that they have to end up doing now and that's that's cre clearly true right Okay, so we'll, we'll continue, yeah. we'll go on. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is that, you know, because they're overwhelmed on, over the different jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in addition, can you still hear me, Paul? Yeah, it's good, it's good. I had some difficulties with my network, but no worries, go, go for it. Okay. So from a cyber resiliency standpoint, or at least from a, from a data management standpoint, as we talked about before, you can't, um, you can't really can't have a conversation around managing data without having a conversation about cyber resiliency. So we're seeing uh, a massive increase in cyber attacks. They're up almost half as many as there were last year. And the costs for being able to prevent an attack is two times greater. It, it grew two times greater just in the last half of the year last year, and even in the last month, it doubled again. So if you looked at what it cost to, to kind of remediate a cyber attack in Q3 and Q4 last year, it was around $84,000 per attack and per, for a particular business. And just in December alone, that number doubled, right? So it came up to about 190,000, almost $200,000 just to remediate one attack. Um, and for example, one attack shut down the Coast Guard uh, transfer uh, facility for as many as 30 hours. So on top of trying to remediate this, this attack, you also have this time that your business is not working that is also costing you money. So between, you know, all around data management, between data sprawl and trying to defend against these attacks, data management, and I think your conversation was, was right on before, Paul, is that Administrators have to pay attention to a lot of different things and a lot of different capabilities in their environment. So what is Spectrum Copy Data Management? It's really a snapshot and replication automation tool for your storage environment. Um, it itself doesn't take the snapshots. It leverages the existing snapshot capabilities you have in the systems that you own. So it's not like you're buying yet another snapshot capability. What you're buying is a tool that can help automate those particular snapshots and be able to leverage those snapshots for multiple reasons and very creatively, I might add, we'll, we'll show you that. Um, you want to be able to, to be able to use those snapshots for multiple reasons, not just, not just you know, one simple recovery, but with uh, Spectrum CDM, you can really automate that uh, recovery and that use of that data and you can have multiple um, multiple uh, options for that. You can use you can use it for DevOps. You can use it for test and dev. Simple application recovery. You know the uh, operational recovery we talked about. You can use it for reporting and analytics, uh, disaster recovery, or cyber resiliency. Multiple multiple different use cases, and we'll talk about a couple in this presentation. Um, in addition, right, it has some great tools to be able to provide the end user. Um, capabilities such as self-service, right? So they're not continuously bugging this very, very busy IT staff, as well as some integration built on top of RESTful APIs to be able to integrate with um, other applications, right? So no matter what that application is, if it can accept and talk to RESTful APIs, you can leverage the two together. So here's a brief overview of kind of the capabilities or the different systems that IBM Copy Data Management supports, right? We support the entire flash system portfolio. And as you know, we recently revamped that uh, portfolio, making it very, very simple and um, really um, complementing it with uh, software capabilities such as Copy Data Management. In addition, we realized that not every single environment is uh, a homogeneous IBM environment. Spectrum Copy Data Management also supports 
the SAN volume controller. So if you're running on top, so if you have the SVC in, in, in your environment, we can help orchestrate those snapshots. And if you have capabilities with Versus Stack, or if you're leveraging EMC, NetApp, or Pure, we can also help you uh, take advantage of uh, managing those snapshots as well. Not just the hardware, right, but also applications, right? So we can quiesce databases, take those snapshots, quiesce VMware, and then help you utilize those application consistent snaps for different use cases. Um, and that's very helpful when, when thinking about test and dev and you're running an application and you want to be able to uh, test that application against some new code that you've just built, right? It's very helpful to do that. So we talk about multiple different use cases that you can use these copies for, right? Whether it be DevOps or reporting, patch management is another good one, cyber resiliency, DR. I don't like to pigeonhole kind of where CDM works, right? Basically, any use case where someone in the organization needs access to data, right? Spectrum CDM can help. So whether it's recovery or, or development or any, any use case anybody could possibly think of, right? You can take advantage and leverage uh, Spectrum CDM. Now it's interesting and where I really think uh, Spectrum CDM helps is there are probably a lot of tools inside of an organization today, right? That take advantage of um, these core sets of what I call common storage services. And those would be cataloging the data, managing the data, then trying to orchestrate that data, and then utilize that data in some form or fashion. And you see this with things like data protection or disaster recovery tools. You see this with DevOps or test dev automation tools. You see this with tools that are trying to help you go to a hybrid multi-cloud environment. And you see this with things like copy data management in general that I've purchased to be able to do this, uh, this uh, data management solution with, right? And in a day and time when we need to be able to be more and more efficient with what we're doing, uh, when it comes to managing our information, it's really helpful to actually just notice that you can actually combine all of these sets of capabilities into a common copy data management solution for all of your different use cases, right? So one solution, Spectrum CDM, can help you catalog, manage, orchestrate, and utilize all of your copies of information. And they all leverage a very similar, not similar, they, all, they leverage the same data flow. And the nice thing is it's a software only solution, provides capabilities such as self-service and RESTful APIs. Um, it's very, very simple to manage and it really helps you take advantage of and control that data sprawl. Okay. Steve, do you hear me Steve right, right now better? I, yeah, I hear you clearly. Yeah, I, I need to figure it out what's the cause of the network issue. And you know, one of my uh, kids started the math lesson um, via, you know, recorded lesson from the Dropbox. So they took all of the bandwidth. <laughs> so I find it, found it the cause. Uh, so here I think it's important to question how, because we, see, we can see on the left, data protection disaster recovery. And could you explain how do you personally feel it should compile at the existing, you know, backup and recovery, most cases, legacy platforms, the CDM philosophy, or should it be actually the replacement? So shall we think about the CDM as add-on or the actually totally new way uh, of use cases that we should in the end replace the existing um, legacy platforms? Yeah, I think, you, I think you make an excellent point. I think that a lot of folks believe that when a sales rep might come in and talk about copy data management, they might be looking to replace an existing solution. And that's, that's not always the case. Um, here we're talking about efficiency. And it's not that I believe that a copy management solution would actually replace a data protection or a DR solution. It clearly shouldn't, right? In fact, you should, we'll talk about the ransomware use case here in a second, but you should always continue to make sure that you're backing up your data, 
according to a process that allows you to do things like rent, um, uh, put the data off site, create uh, an air gap or immutability for your storage. But what I will say, for example, is that a copy management solution in a backup scenario, right? So let's say I'm, I'm doing some work and I inadvertently delete something or um, someone maliciously deletes a, a file, right? For those particular use cases, your operational recovery, rather than going back to tape or streaming data back from even disk, let's say from a data protection solution such as Spectrum Protect, you can quickly pull up your, snap, your latest snapshot and be off and running. Snapshots can be taken very quickly. So your RPO, right, is very, uh, they're, they're very quick. And your RTO, the time to pull up that snapshot is quick. At the end of the day, this is really all about the businesses being able to be more efficient. Then you take a look at like a test dev uh, solution and who knows what test and dev uses today in, the, in a particular environment, right? I think uh, IT practitioners are finding more and more. There are a lot of different uh, capabilities to be able to provide data to uh, a development person. Maybe they're streaming it back from a backup. Um, but clearly in that particular scenario, they don't have, uh, the, the, the developer won't have access to the data, right? They have to act, they have to ask it for help and, and then who knows where it goes, right? But with tools like CDM, you can provide self-service capabilities to that developer or to anyone who actually needs access to the data. You can ensure that they only have, um, when I say recovery capabilities, they can't step on existing production data. They can only put it in a particular environment. So you can protect the, the running of the business, right? The production environment of the business, yet still give people who need access to the data that access um, and be able to, to manage it very, very quickly. So I see, I see them, uh, CDM complementing a, a, a a bigger solution like a DR, like a, a data protection solution, but not replacing it fully. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. So rather more think about the not replacement, the great uh, add-on, or of course, if we don't have any solution, it can be the first and let's say could fulfill all of the needs, yes. Uh, but definitely it's not the replacement for existing backup platforms. Do you feel when you're out in the field that, uh, that folks kind of think it should, they think maybe you're talking to them about replacement, but it's, it's, it, uh, and then you, you tend to talk to them a little bit more about how it can complement the environment. Yeah. I'm more always, you know, trying to, to get the more, let's say complement thing, do not go and, you know, just get rid of and replace. So I always, you know, believer that, we should do in some evolution and the CDM is kind of the, definitely is the, is the new approach and the way how we can get the things easier and, and definitely faster. So like you said, the uh, RTO and RPR is much more aggressive than in the typical scenarios. Very good. And I mean, it's just more okay, about so. the full API approach, but you, I, I think you will tell later on, uh, you know, from the different yep. you know, user use cases. Yep, we will do that. So in CDM, just so you have a kind of a view of how things work, right? Copies are created, snapshots, clones, or replicas. Then what we do is we have this global catalog that will track all of those copies. So now you can keep it, uh, keep, uh, understand what's happening in your environment so you don't get data sprawl. Then you can use those copies. You can map them to ones and be able to take advantage and use those copies then you can actually set up, a, just like you set up a backup process that maybe happens, okay, every evening at 5 p.m., you can also set up a, a recovery or a refresh process so that if you're giving data or the uh, developers are using data and you want them to have access to the latest production data, you can say, hey, every Friday while they go home or maybe every Sunday while they're home, right, and when they come in Monday, uh, you can actually have a snapshot replace an existing snapshot of uh, production data 
you know, of what they were working on so that they're working with fresh, fresh information. Then once that application has been developed and you're done testing it, you can actually migrate that into production very simply and easily. And then for all those testing copies that you had out there, because we keep track of them with the push of a button, you can actually delete the, the bad copies or the copies that you don't need anymore for a particular project, really keeping the data center fresh. It's a software only solution. The snaps are uh, space efficient. You can have as many copies as you want. Uh, and these copies can be replicated and then you can even use those replicated copies and scoop them up with something like a Spectrum Protect to be able to have existing backup copies without having a, a big sprawl of, of snapshots. From a self-service capability, right? The storage team takes advantage of the, the Spectrum CDM interface and sets up some policies. They define the access and then they can create templates so they can give the development team or a reporting team or anybody access to information so that they can quickly and easily reuse the copies of information. Now from a data flow perspective, it's important to note that um, it's the same for all the different use cases, right? So again, we talked about it's agentless. So we'll go in and we'll agentlessly quiesce a database and we'll make a copy and you can make as many copies as you want. And then you can actually take that copy and you can move it to a replica system should you want to and use that copy for uh, testing purposes, development purposes, et cetera, whatever those different use cases are. And then you can actually promote those copies in their existing location. And maybe what you see on the left-hand side of the screen is a, is a recovery of a particular loss of something. So take that snap and recover the data. Or on the target system, maybe that's a system that is not in production where the development team is doing, making multiple copies of, of data to be able to test against uh, an application maybe that they're building. Now, Steve, you said about the engine. So it's always the data flow looks like you, you hit and you reach the snapshot on the hardware level. So the flash system in this scenario, uh, or is, there is the option, you know, from time to time to hit or speak directly to the application itself. Mm. So is the, is the way to use the agent in the CDM? Yeah, so, so the, the, what happens is at runtime, meaning when you execute the particular snapshot, we will, agent, we will inject an agent uh, on the, here it's, it's a SQL example, right? Huh? To be able to quiesce that database, take a crash consistent and an application consistent copy of that database and then use it. The benefits are of course, in a recovery process, you want it to be as uh, uh, application consistent right up to the latest and greatest transaction as possible, right? Because that saves on data loss and it saves a lot of work in recovering of that, that database. When you're testing, right? You don't, again, you don't want to do the same work. You want to be able to work on the latest and greatest, freshest set of data so that you know that the application you're building is working properly. Does that help answer that question? Yep. Thank you. Okay. So in a DevOps environment, for example, right? Again, you can give the capabilities of the use, the usability of the application over to the development team. They can take a snapshot of the, or a copy of their, uh, of the existing data center. They can put that data uh, in, in the location that they want, again, not in production. Um, and they can integrate that set of capabilities with tools such as a chef or a puppet. That way, when they call out, um, maybe spinning up a new chef environment, not only does it spin up the compute, but it can also spin up the data as well. So they can be off and working very, very fast. In fact, um, we've had a, a major customer report that for their test dev infrastructure, that they had gone to 30 hours or they had gone from 60 hours a month to just three hours of that's managing, moving, finding space, cleaning up old data, right? To be able to give data over to the development team 
to be able to continue to work on um, applications that they need to in order to keep their management happy. So, I mean, that's a pretty massive, massive productivity gain, right? 95% from 60 hours to three. So by putting the tool in the hands of the development team, they have the ability to not bother IT, create the snaps that they want, make sure they're fresh. Um, working on fresh data means they don't have to go through as an iterative as a process as normal um, with their existing data and work on, work on data. You know, another great use case as we've been talking about is this cyber incident response. So in the event that your environment gets, gets attacked, right? You have this um, uh, ability to go in through the catalog that, the, that Spectrum CDM offers and look at all of the different snapshots and when they were taken, right? Then what you can do is you can reuse an iterative process to be able to choose a recover point of your choice that you wish to, to recover from. You might know when the attack hit or you might not know. And we'll talk about that in a second. You can recover that, that snapshot into an isolated network. In that isolated network, you can test, bring up that, that um, snap, test to make sure that everything in the snap is still, is, is not infected. If it is infected, you, the tools inside of CDM help you wipe it right out quickly and easily. You can then go find another snapshot, pull it up, test it, make sure it works, right? And when it does work, you can migrate it into production very, very simply and very, very easily. Now, the catch here is that's truly the fastest way to cover from an incident, right? And you wanna have those tools available to you to be able to do that quickly and simply, especially with CDM helping you to pull that data up in an isolated environment so it's not stepping on production data and infecting clean data. Um, but as we know, right, infections can stay in businesses for as many as 200 days, right? So you might not have 200 days worth of snapshots. This is where the complement um, to tape, right, is helpful. So if you're doing your traditional backup and you have, you know, you know, your, your typical tape rotation of daily incrementals, weekly fulls, and, uh, you know, multi-year retention, you can go back to the, the latest, cleanest copy. So, again, good reason to have belts and suspenders here. So, from a competitive overview, just so that you have a little information, right, Spectrum CDM is software only, right? A lot of our competitors require an appliance. We can take advantage of your existing platform. So the reason why that's important is when you buy these new appliances to do copy management, those, those platforms might not have the same type of uh, infrastructure requirements that your business does. You've paid for your existing storage for a particular reason. You went through a proof of concept. It has the performance you need, the, the storage service capabilities that you need, right? Let's, let's help leverage them a little bit more you might not have those same capabilities in a competitive product. We can leverage your existing storage services. So as I said, this is not a replacement for your snapshot capabilities, but we can we take advantage of your existing ones. Um, we keep an enterprise wide catalog of your existing snapshots. So not just the snapshots um, that you take on your IBM system, but if you're using CDM to, to take snapshots across your environment, we can help you find and utilize those uh, in from one catalog and it plugs into your existing environment. It's not, it's not something you have to also bolt on as a part of, as a part of a new solution. So just to wrap up, right? It's not a dedicated appliance. It's software only, which helps to reduce uh, your overall cost. Now that's a CapEx savings, but from a, from a usability perspective, it's a massive OPEX savings. We help you retain the performance and your storage efficiency solutions that you already have in place. It's zero touch once you install it, just going through the configuration uh, panel, you don't have to install agents or any of that. It's one stop uh, solution to help you do uh, very fast operational recovery, disaster recovery, it helps you test DR very quickly. And remember a DR plan is not a plan unless you've tested it. It allows you to do, uh, provide you self-service and RESTful APIs to give capabilities over to the, 
to the development team and it's full stack automation. We can automate and optimize across all of your VMs, databases, file shares, etc. So that is a the, brief the, overview. Yes, sir. Just, just, yeah, just one question. So uh, let's say the best and sweet spot for, so what's the, let's say, best use case? Uh, coming back again, let's say to the most businesses which use already the backup and recovery solutions. So where you advise, you know, which, in which scenario they should start, think, you know, right away about the CDM approach. Yeah, I think that's a great question because we get that we get that a lot. We talk about it, but then people say, "Well, where can I really take advantage of it?" And I think um, today there's a few things to keep in mind. Number one is, you know, this notion around um, being very cost efficient, right? So I might have four or five different capabilities in my environment that provide the same set of um, what I called copy services: the copying of the data, the movement of the data the reuse of the data, the utilization of the data, right? Anytime I can streamline that into one thing, right, can be very, very helpful. Um, so that, that's, that's one good, good place or good, good thing to think about. The next is uh, what tools are you using in your environment to satisfy uh, folks coming to you to be able to utilize data? Now, one of the places we recognize a lot is the DevOps environment. And that's why I chose that use case. Development is constantly coming to IT, asking for a copy of the data, and then how do I make sure that I can provide that copy of data to them quickly and efficiently. Um, with the self-service capabilities, this really helps um, complement that and, and give them the ability to be able to do that when they want without having to bug IT, but letting IT configure it in such a way that they feel safe handing self-service over to, to a user. Um, the other uh, thing is, is for cyber resiliency. Now, IBM offers a cyber resiliency assessment. We're happy to help you with that. Um, but in addition, to, uh, in addition to just finding the holes in your existing environment, being able to, what we're finding is being able to operationally recover from a cyber incident quickly and simply um, is difficult. We're finding that a lot of customers, uh, it's taking them uh, I think the average is 73 days to remediate from a cyber attack. And that's because they have to go back to uh, non-snapshot based solutions outside of maybe a Spectrum Protect Plus or a Spectrum CDM and go to their existing backup platform to be able to find uh, data that can be helpful without having the ability to quickly test what they might have in their environment and see if it's, if it's available. So between the multiple use case scenario, the self-service capability for a DevOps team, and the ability to quickly recover from a cyber attack um, to test that environment, those are three great use cases to start in and, and look at for your environment. Okay, okay, thank you. And I, do, do I you know, remember correctly that uh, CDM is also the part uh, of the suite offering, yes? Uh, it's, is, it, is it correct? It is or... not a part of uh, storage suite yet, but we are doing some very, very big promotional um, uh, capabilities around our new flash systems offering to be able to take advantage okay. of. So it can be easily combined. Okay, so I'm misunderstanding, yes. yeah. Yep, they can be combined, yep. Okay, and uh, last, last thing, how to start the journey? So any recommendation? or uh, sh shall everybody should contact you or uh, the trial version wh where we should start? Yeah, you can okay. go to the web, the IBM website and there is a 30 day free trial. It's a, it's a OVA file. You can download it and install it. It's a VM. Um, and it's, you know, in today's day and age, uh, a lot of the tools that IBM is building, taking advantage of design thinking, um, has the ability to be able to, uh, you look at it, it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty intuitive, and you then go and you configure uh, the solution. You start with configuring your service levels. How often do I want to take a snap? Where do I want it to, to land? And on which system do I want to take the snaps from? 
And uh, okay. quite frankly, <laughs> uh, I've used the tool. And if I can do it, I think anybody in the IT profession could probably do it. But okay. I will point out, right? If you, it's a good question, Paul. You know, you can you can do that self um, um, uh, that thirty day trial on your own. But feel free; you can reach out to uh, any of our partner business partners or your storage rep, and they'll be happy to help you uh, set that up as well. Okay. Uh so Steve, uh, so thank you. So we will close the the presentation part. And we'll go in a minute to the QA session, but I, right now we'll stop the recording. Uh, so later on, we'll push on, uh, put it on the YouTube. Uh, so thank you. We're closing this part and waiting for the QA session. Certainly.